डॉक्टर आदर्श थी एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एट गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज फॉर वुमेन सिटोकॉट इन पंचकुला टूडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट अ न्यू टॉपिक दैट इज फ्रेश वाटर फिशेज ऑफ इंडिया इंडिया इज फॉर्चुनेट टू हैव रिच फ्रेश वाटर रिसोर्सेज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ रिवर्स लेक्स रिजर्वॉयर्स पॉन्ड्स एंड मेनी वाटर लॉक प्लेसेज It has total water surface area of 3 lakh 14,400 square kilometers, with different types of water resources, and receives an average annual rainfall of 1,100 millimeter. The inland fisheries resources of India have traditionally played a significant role in human nutrition and have always been looked upon as an important source of livelihood for millions of fishermen. The freshwater capture fishery in India is chiefly concerned with the rivers, canals, lakes and reservoirs. India has instead of enormous potential resources and ideal conditions for the improvement of fisheries in India, it is not well developed as in other countries and has a great scope for further expansion of the fisheries. Freshwater resources are also known as inland fisheries. So let me tell you about the different types of freshwater resources in India. First is the river system fisheries. Riverine fisheries resources of India comprises five major river systems like Ganga, Brahmaputra, Indus, system of North India and peninsular east coast and west coast river system in the south. Second is the lakes and reservoirs fishery. and third is the pond fisheries so in this lecture we will study the different river systems of india and fish fauna found in them if we talk about the river and fisheries rivers in india constitute the backbone of captured fisheries there are 113 major and minor rivers along with their principal tributaries having a combined length of 45000 km of which 80% of the total length is contributed by 14 major rivers river basins of 7 lakh 20000 square kilometer catchment area characterize the major rivers ganga brahmaputra indus river system in north mahanadi krishna godavari and kaveri system along with the east coast and narmada and tapti drainage of face west coast in peninsular india are the principal river and fisheries resources of india before going into the detail of the river and fisheries first we must know about the rivers rivers are linear systems which show a gradient of characters along their length so as the character of river changes the type of fish fauna found in it also changes The longitudinal profile of a river is concave with a steep upper portion near the source giving way to reaches of progressively less gradient as the mouth is approached Elise and Boutsenu in 1963 have suggested two distinct zones of the river on the basis of the physical and biological composition the steep and torrential upper course known as ridron and the flat and slow flowing river course known as potemon and each portion of the river has its own peculiar environment so first we will study about the ridron in a river the steep and torrential upper course is called ridron zone ridron zone shows an alteration between steep narrow and shallow riffles or rapids with the flatter and deeper reaches termed as pools as far as riffel is concerned it is a rocky or shallow part of the stream or river where the water flows brokenly and rapid is a section of a river where the river bed has relatively steep gradient causing an increase in water velocity and turbulence and pools are flatter and deeper reaches in the river so three type of environment is there in ridron in riffles water flows brokenly in rapids 
water flows very fast velocity is very high and in pools the velocity of water is a little bit low and they are the shallow portion of the rudron region so rudron is characterized by turbulent flow and relatively low temperatures because the river is highly agitated the water is highly oxygenated but at low water the pool and riffle system may break up into series of pools whose water may become completely depleted of oxygen and during flood the planktons are scanty now the adaptations of fishes of rudron zone fish species in rudron zones are entirely rheophilic and categorized into two groups the one group of fishes includes the species which lives on or among the rocks and vegetation of the bottom and these are distributed predominantly in the riffles typically these are small sized and are adapted to grip or cling to the substrate long sinus shape enables fishes to twine among the crevices in the rocky bottom they may develop some specialized structures such as mouth suckers friction pads and hooks so here you can see the mouth suckers in chiloglenes which are the upside down catfishes so you can see here in this slide the dorsal lateral and ventral view of chiloglenes and this is the picture of ventral friction pad in case of astroblepus with the help of this pad these fishes can easily grip the rocks and this is the gliptothorax in which pectoral fins and spines are adapted as hooks which helps them in clinging in the rapid flow of the water the other group of species such as barbus or salmo they are adapted to swim sufficiently fast as to resist the current and sometimes they even swim against the current but they can't swim on a constant basis so they frequently take hide in the static water of the pools and the rocks or any other hurdle which disrupt the water current because of the harshness of the habitat diversity of resident species tends to be low here next is the potemon zone in a river the flat slow flowing lower course is called potemon zone Potemon zone is characterized by wide, flat, twisting channels, mud bottoms, and rooted and floating vegetation. The Potemon zone shows further zonation, which is both longitudinal and lateral. Longitudinally, there is a replication of differing habitats associated with the twisted channels. Laterally, there is a distinction between main channel. and its flood plain the flood plain is usually an area of relatively flat land adjoining the main channel the plain is usually higher near the river where raised banks limit the main channel and slopes downward towards the foot of the terrace confining the plain many bodies of water are found on the plain ranging from small temporary pools to large permanent lagoons and swamps the potemon is environmentally more complex than rudron and combines both lentic and lotic waters lentic word is derived from the latin word lotus meaning is washing and it is refers to the running water so lentic means running water and lotic mean still water so in this region both running and still waters may be present the plain itself contains many types of water bodies some of which retain water throughout the inner flood period because of the deposition of the silt such features show a succession from the open lagoon through vegetation lined pools densely vegetated swamps or dry land in the water bodies of the flood plain dissolved oxygen concentration fall in dry season particularly 
in the smaller pools which may become completely depleted of oxygen so there is usually a well defined river channel flanked by a flood plain the zone is influenced by the local environment also and in turn affect the behavior of the fishes now let us see the adaptation of the fish of potemon again there are two main adaptations which enable fish to survive in the condition during the low waters the first adaptation is among the species which are specially adapted to resist the low dissolved oxygen concentration the adaptations may be in the form of auxiliary respiratory organs for using the atmospheric oxygen and the examples are clarius batrachus notoptrus notoptrus caracius or many cypridontid the same species have a capacity to tolerate high temperatures also they have complex breeding habits with multiple spawning and great degree of parental care they migrate laterally between two habitats these are dry season habitat in the river channels and the flood season habitat in the inundated area the second adaptation can be among the species which use a rich habitat provided by the flood plain during the flood but they escape the severe dry season conditions lateral and longitudinal migration so they move to flood plain during the flood and move to the deeper regions of the main river channel or in the sea or some other large water body adjacent to the river system during the dry season many of them moves up river even as far as redrone zone these fishes show few adaptations other than a capacity for fast and sustained swimming their breeding strategy is simple relying on the single release of a vast number of eggs either on the flood plain or in the headwater streams to accomplish this they may undertake migrations for very long distances up and down the river now we will take riverine systems classification rivers are categorized into four groups major rivers medium rivers minor rivers and desert rivers major rivers are those which have a catchment area of 20000 km square or more there are 14 such major rivers in india further they are classified into himalayan rivers and peninsular rivers based on their origin of the river medium river is a river with a catchment area of 2000 to 20000 km square there are 44 such rivers in india of these rivers nine rivers are interstate rivers as they flow through more than one state it is interesting to know that 17 rivers flow towards the arabian sea and 23 flow towards the bay of bengal and four rivers are present in north eastern states minor rivers are those which has catchment area of less than 2000 km square there are numerous and mostly small streams flowing from western and eastern ghats to the sea the fourth is the desert rivers these rivers flow for some distance and disappear in the deserts of rajasthan these rivers include luni machi rupen saraswati baner and ghagar now the major riverine systems of india india is quite rich when it comes to the inland water resources it has a vast network of rivers canals lakes and ponds on the basis of the geographical conditions and fish species the riverine system of india is divided into five major river systems these are ganga river system the brahmaputra river system the indus river system the east coast river system and the west coast river system let me tell you that besides the major rivers there are tributaries there are extensive irrigation canals a large number of lakes ponds and reservoirs constructed by man which are all rich source of fishes all these water bodies have about 994 fish species of about 
345 genera. Now, first of all, we will do the Ganga River system. The Ganga River system is considered as one of the largest river system of the world. Its total length is 8047 km. It drains the southern slope of central Himalaya and covers the states of Uttaranchal, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, parts of Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal. Its water is icy cold in Himalayas and warm, biologically more productive in the plains. The total catchment area of this river system is 9.71 lakh square kilometer. This river system includes River Ganga, which is fifth largest in the world. Ganga originates from Ice Cave Gomuk in Garhwal, Himalaya and discharged into the Bay of Bengal. It's supported by rivers Yamuna, Gandak, Kosi, Gomti, Ghagra, Tones, Sons and Kane. Yamuna originates from Yamunotri in Himalayas and covers the distance about 1000 km before joining the Ganga at Allahabad, the place is Prayag. So here in this map you can see that the river Ganga started from Gomuk. This is Gangotri. First it enters into Uttarakhand, then in Uttar Pradesh, then enters into the Bihar then West Bengal and then discharges into Bay of Bengal. The place is known as Ganga Sagar. And the length of the main channel from traditional source of the Gangotri, that is a glacier in India, is about 2550 kilometers. In this map, you can see that Ganga River system has River Ganga and Yamna as its major component. And besides these, other rivers are Ram Ganga, Gomti, Ghagra, Kosi, Gandak, Jain Ganga from the northern side and Chambal, Betwa, Ton, Sons rivers are the tributaries which join southern side. And as I have told you earlier that Yamuna originates from Yamunotri in the Himalayas and covers a distance of about 1000 km before joining the Ganga at Allahabad that is Prayag. Now let us see the fisheries of the Ganga River system, which consists of 382 reported species. The major cultivable species are among the major carps, Sirhanus mirgala, Labio rohita, Katla Katla, Labio kalbasu are the main. Some other carps are like Labio bata, Labio diro, Sirhanus reba. If we talk about the catfishes, these are Valaguato, Mr. Singhala, Mistress or Bagarius Bagarius, Rita Rita, Ompok Pabda, Clarius Batrachus, and Heteronistus fossilis are the main. Among the clupids, Hilsa, which is a migratory fish, Gadusia chapra, and Hilsa elisha are the main species. If we talk about the cold water fisheries, which are commonly known as Mahasirs, so this system harbor different species of tor and acrosocalius. Regarding the snow trout, these are the schizothorax and schizothorax. This genus is present in this system. Prawns like macrobrachium, malcolm sonai and palemon species are also present. The second system is Brahmaputra river system. This river system is present in the northeast of India and it drains the northern slope of central and eastern Himalayas. It covers the states of Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Bhutan, Sikkim and parts of north of West Bengal. The river Brahmaputra is the main river of this system. That's why it is named as Brahmaputra river system and this river is about 2,900 km long. It is a transboundary river flowing through China, India and Bangladesh also. It originates in the Mansarovar Lake region located on the northern, northern side of the Himalayas in Tibet. There it is known as 
Ti Sangpo River. It flows through the Himalayas and covers the states of Arunachal Pradesh and Assam and through Bangladesh it empties into the Bay of Bengal. Here you can see in this map it flows through the Himalayas then enters into the Arunachal Pradesh and Assam then into the Bangladesh and empties into the Bay of Bengal. Brahmaputra is a massive river and at some areas it is nearly 20 km wide. The main tributaries are Jiyodhal, Dihang, Subansri, Ranganadi, Dibru, Dhirong, Manas, Champarmati, Phulmari and Sankosh. The first 1600 km course of this river is in Tibet, 160 km is in Arunachal Pradesh and then it enters into the valley of Assam. In its last leg, through Bangladesh, the river is joined by Padma and Meghna before emptying into the Bay of Bengal. Regarding its fish fauna, a total of 216 species of 36 families have been reported from Brahmaputra, out of which in Assam has about 40 species of commercial importance. Torrential streams in its upper reaches has fish fauna not of much economic value, but the middle and the lower reaches have several species of carps, catfishes, air breathing fishes, and anadromous fishes like hilsa, which is are of considerable economic importance. Among the carps, Sirhanus reba, Sirhana mrigala, Katla Katla, Libio rohita, Libio gonius, Puntius serana, Puntius sephor are some of the major carps. Among the catfishes, Velago is the dominating species among the catfishes. Other than it, Mr. Singhala, Mr. Or, Mr. Bleakri, Bagarius Bagarius, Pangasius Pangasius, Ompak bimaculatus, Clarius batrachus, Heteronistus fossilis, Rita Rita are the main catfishes. Some other miscellaneous species are Chana Merulius, Chana Gachua, Chana Striatus, Master Symbalis Armatus, Hilsa Elisha, Notopris Notopris, Chila Bacala, Ambesis Nama, it is also known as Chandanama and Ambesis Ranga are the main fishes. Now the Indus River system. The main river of this system is Indus River, which is a massive river, but after the partition in 1947, only a small segment is left in the present day India. Other rivers of this system are Indus, the Jhelum, Chinab, Ravi, Bias, and Satluj. As I have told you earlier, it is a very large river system of northern India, but it's only a small segment in the form of Bias, Satluj is left in the present India. And these are supported by a small part of Ravi and Tavi rivers. You can see in this map, these blue lines shows the part which is in the present India. And the green part shows the part of Indus river system in the Pakistan. In this map, you can see that river Indus originates in the northern slope of Kalash range in Tibet. It enters Indian territory in Jammu and Kashmir, then moves to Pakistan. River Jhelum originates in the southeastern part of Kashmir in a spring at Verinag. It flows into the Vula Lake, which lies to the north and then into the Baramula. Its catchment area lies in the Indo-Pakistan border. Then River Chenab. The Chenab originates from the confluence of two rivers. These are Chandra and the Bhaga, which themselves originate from either side of the Baralacha Pass in Lahore. It enters the plains of Punjab near the Akhnur and is later joined by the Chelam. It is further joined by the Ravi and the Satlaj in Pakistan. Then River Ravi. The Ravi originates near the Rohatang Pass in the Kangra Himalayas and follows a northwesterly course. It flows as a part of Indo-Pakistan border for some distance before entering into the Pakistan and joining the Chenab River. 
The total length of the river Ravi is about 720 kilometers and its catchment area is about 14,442 kilometers square. Then river Bias. The river Bias originates in Bias Kund, lying near the Rohatang Pass. It runs past Manali and Kulu, where its beautiful valley is known as Kulu Valley. It joins the Satluj Ravi near Harika. After being joined by a few tributaries, the total length of the river is 615 km with a catchment area of 20,303 km square. Then the river Satluj. Satluj originates from the Rakas Lake, which is connected to the Mansarovar Lake by a stream situated in Tibet. It flows in a northwesterly direction, enters into the Himachal Pradesh at the Shipki Pass, where it joined with the Spiti River. It cuts deep gorges in the ranges of Himalayas and finally enters the Punjab Plain. After cutting a gorge in a hill range, the Naina Devi Dhar, where the Bhagra Dam, having a large reservoir of water known as Govind Sagar, has been constructed. It turns west below Ropar and is later joined by the Bias. It enters into the Pakistan near the Sulaymanki and is later joined by the Chinab. It has a total length of almost 1500 km. Regarding the fish fauna, a total of 78 species are known from the water bodies of Himachal Pradesh. These rivers harbor the exotic rainbow and brown trout. In the upper reaches, and a variety of indigenous carps and catfishes in the lower section. The trout stream of Kashmir constitute one of the world's richest sport fishing water attracting the anglers and tourists from all over the world. Some other important species are Torputitora, Shizothorex, Levio Rohita, Levio Kalbasu, Levio Bata, Sirhanus Mrigala, Katla Katla, Istas Singhala, Balego Atto, Chana Punctatus, and Cyprinus Scarpio. Now the East Coast River System. This river system is composite system of rivers of eastern India. It is formed by Mahanadi, Kudavri, Krishna and Kaviri, having a combined length of nearly 6,430 kilometers. This system drains the entire peninsular India east of Western Ghats in the west and southern part of central India including Chota Nagpur hill ranges. Each river of this system having several tributaries. You can see in this map, this is Mahanadi, this is Godavari, this is Krishna and this is Kaveri. Let us talk one by one. You can see here in this map, Mahanadi is the largest river of Odisha and has a total course of 558 kilometers supported by Brahmani, Daya and Subarnalekha. Mahanadi is the largest river of Odisha, has a total course of 858 kilometers. Mahanadi is also known for Hirakun Dam. The river flows through the states of Chhattisgarh and Odisha. Like many other seasonal Indian rivers, the Mahanadi too is a combination of many mountain streams, so its precise source is impossible to pinpoint. However, its farthest headwater lies 600 km from Farsia village that is 442 meters above the sea level and about 11 km in the dense patch of forest. At the south of Sihava town, in Dhamatari district of Chhattisgarh. The hills here are the extensions of Eastern Ghats and are a source of many other streams which then go on to join the Mahanadi. The Mahanadi proper enters the sea via several channels near the Paradi at Falls Point, Jagat Singhpur. The combined delta of the Mahanadi's numerous distributaries and the Brahmini is one of the largest in India. This is a NASA image of Mahanadi River 
and one more very interesting thing is that mahanadi naturally has all the indian major carbs common with the ganga and you can see it originates in the chatisgarh then move towards the odisha and then near the paradeep it forms a delta and merges into bay of bengal The Godavari is India's second longest river after Ganga. Its source is in Trimbakeshwar in Maharashtra. It flows east for 1465 kilometers draining the states of Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and this river ultimately empties into the Bay of Bengal through an extensive network of tributaries. measuring up to 3 lakh 12812 km square it forms one of the largest river basins in the indian subcontinent along with the ganga and indus rivers having a larger drainage basin in the north in terms of length catchment area and discharge the godavari is the largest in peninsular india and had been dubbed as dakshin ganga that means the ganga of the south so as i have told you earlier the river godavari is about 1445 km in length you can see in this map that it originates at teolali hills near nasik and venu ganga indravati and majira are the main tributaries of this river and ultimately it empties into the bay of bengal through an extensive network of tributaries the main fishes are serhinus mrigala lebio fimbriatus lebio kalbasu and katla katla the river krishna originates in the western ghat ranges near the pune and is about 1120 km long its main tributaries are bhima and tungabhadra rivers several reservoirs have been built on the rivulets and some major dams are lakkawali tungabhadra koyona vani vilas sagar have been constructed so you can see in this map this is river krishna this is river bhima this is tungabhadra and ultimately it empties into bay of bengal This river have their indigenous fauna of carps, catfishes, mussels, perches and prawns. Again you can see in this map that river Kaveri is a large perennial river of South India originates from Brahmagiri hills on the western ghats and flows southeasterly direction and emptying into into the Bay of Bengal near Tanjavur district in Tamil Nadu. the bhavani amravati and noil river a large metro dam has been constructed on kaveri about 80 species of fishes are reported from this river these includes carps like tor putitora barbus carnaticus labio contius sirhinus sirhosa catfishes like mr singhala mr spore velagoto pangesis pangesius exotic fishes like sirhinus mrigala cyprinus carpio are also found in it now the west coast river system this river system includes the basins of narmada and tapti rivers and it drains the narrow belt of peninsular india west of western ghats The Narmada and Tapti are the longest rivers of the system and are functionally rich. You can see these rivers in this map. All the rivers of this region arising from the Western Ghats are short and though many are perennial most are like the torrential streams only. Let me tell you about the Narmada river first. This river originates from Amarkandak hills of Bilaspur located in Madhya Pradesh and is 1280 km long. It has number of tributaries. It empties in the Gulf of Cambay. 
so it flows in the opposite direction it has 16 tributaries in madhya pradesh two in gujarat the major fishes of narmada are carps catfishes murals and minnows the river tapti originates from satpura range of vindhya mountains flows through madhya pradesh maharashtra gujarat and then joining the gulf of kambwe that means arabian sea near surat the fisheries of includes tot or labio fimbriatus labio bata labio bogat labio kalbasu puntis sarana sirinus brigala valagotu mr singhala mr or and chana species so this system is functionally quite rich and the total length of this system is 3380 kilometers so in this map you can see this is the river narmada originates from the amarkantak hills and covers the states of madhya pradesh and gujarat and empties in the arabian sea and this is the river tapti originates from satpura range of vindhya mountains flows through madhya pradesh maharashtra and gujarat then joining the gulf of kambwe that is the arabian sea now we will discuss fishes of riverine fisheries the riverine fisheries of plains support the following fishes first the major carps you can see here in this slide these are katla katla labio bata labio rohita sirhinus mregala and labio kalbasu next group is of cat fishes these fishes are naked they don't have scales and have long barbels just like cat that's why they are called as cat fishes so important cat fishes are mr singhala mr or heteronistis fossilis clarius batrachus ompak by maculatus this is the legoat too and this is bagerius bagerius other than these ompak pabda pangesis pangesis are also very important next group is of murals this include chana micropeltis chana punctatus chana striatus chana gachua and chana merulius these are also known as snake heads and the other name of chana genus is ophiocephalus so they are also called as ophiocephalus micropeltis ophiocephalus punctatus ophiocephalus gachua ophiocephalus striatus and ophiocephalus merulius the next group is of clupids so important clupids are notoptus 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 chitala and migratory fish hilsa then the cold water fishes which is known as mahseer and this group includes tortor tor putitora tor khurdi and acrosuchelius hexagonoplepis then the game fishes which are trout the important one are salmo trouta and salmo gyatneri commonly known as american trout introduced into the kashmir and nilgiri hills this is salmo salar and this is oncorhynchus which is commonly known as rainbow trout so all these trout they are considered under the game fishes some miscellaneous fishes are also found in the riverine fisheries which are eels they are snake like having long snake like body these are angula bengalensis mustus symbalis armatus and amphinus guccia some important minor carps are barbus species schizothorax species and many species of genus puntius then an other important group is of perches which includes colisa fishiatus and colisa lelius now let us discuss some factors influencing fish yield from rivers the intensity of fishing nature of exploitation and the species orientation are the characteristics of the riverine fisheries and are governed by many factors like 
seasonality of riverine fishing activity, unstable catch composition, conflicting multiple use of river water, cultural stresses leading to the nutrient loading and pollution, lack of understanding of the fluvial system and inform database, fragmentary and outmoded conservation measures lacking enforcement of machinery, inadequate infrastructure and support services, affordability and petability and there are some socio-economic and socio-cultural determinants. So all these factors together influence the fish yield from the rivers. So this is all about the river and fisheries and we have discussed five major river systems of India and fish fauna found in them. And now in this session, we will discuss the important questions of this topic. First of all, very short answer type questions. So first question from this category is, what are two zones of river? Next is define redrawn. Next is name five river systems of India. Next is write three types of inland fisheries found in India. Next, define the riverine fisheries. Next question is name rivers of east coast system. Next is name four fish species found in Ganga river system. Next is which river system supports the trout. Next question is name rivers of west coast system. Next is what are major rivers. Second category is of short answer type questions. And first question from this category is, write a note on Ganga river system. Next is, explain Brahmaputra river and fisheries. Next is, describe the east coast river system and its fish fauna. Next is, explain Indus river system. What is its importance in fisheries? Next question is, write the important rivers of West Coast River and fisheries and fish fauna found in them. And the last question from this category is, define river. What are the various zones of the river? Write about fish fauna found in different zones of the river. Do all the questions. It helps you in examination. Thanks for being with me. Goodbye.